All right, so let's uh, keep our discussion going. This is one of my favorite parts of the function unit because we're actually going to be writing some equations today. So let's take a look at uh, what we have here. So the first question is the following a function. Is the x-axis a line that's considered to be a function? Well, let's take a look. Would a vertical line hit the x-axis more than once if I drew a vertical line? No, it wouldn't. So if it will only hit once, not more than once, then it is a function. Okay, over here, we, if we look at the the example here is the domain discrete or continuous and in this case it's phone calls by the number so each phone call costs a certain amount and as long as it, it costs a specific amount then it would be considered discrete now if you were being measured by the continuously monitoring time increments like 1 minute, 1.2 minutes, 1.3 minutes, and so on and so forth, then that would be considered uh, continuous. And that was what kind of looks a little similar like that here, but this only says uh, cell phones 1, 2, and 3. So, uh, in fact, in this case, it might be how many phones you have on your plan instead of the number of phone calls you make. So one plan, $45, two phones on your plan, they bump it up a little bit, but it's still a discrete amount. Okay, number three, the number of shirts and shorts that can you can buy with $30 is represented in the following explanation, this particular uh, table of values. So if you get zero shirts and six shorts, It'll cost you $30. If you get one pair of shorts and four shirts, $30, and so on and so forth. And three shirts and no shorts, cost you $30. So write the equation in function form for that setup right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to, so here's the equation that we've got. So we're going to have to solve it for y. So 10x plus 5y equals 30. So to write it in function form, we just solve for y. So we put 5y in front where it's, it wants to be, then the equal sign. The 10x gets moved to behind the equal sign, and because it crosses the equal sign, it becomes its opposite. And the plus 30 is still there. We just put a plus in front of it so we don't lose track that it's positive. Then we divide everything by 5. And then when we do that, we, we end up with y equals a negative 10 divided by 5 is actually negative 2x. And 30 divided by 5 is a positive 6. So there's y equals mx plus b, or the other name about that it takes on is a function or function form. Okay, so we answered this question right here. Now, why is x equal 4 not in the domain? So if you look at this particular function right here, I want to make sure I'm not looking at something different. Why would uh, 4 not be in the domain of this particular function? Well, if we graph it, let's take a look y equals negative 2x plus 6, so we would start at 6, and go down 2 over 2, down 2 over 2, down 2 over 2. So this is what it would look like if we graph that function. Okay, so y is y equals 4, not or x equals 4, not in the, in the function. Well, if you look at it, here's x equals 4. So it doesn't even in, doesn't even intersect the graph. So that's why it's not in the domain because it doesn't even intersect the graph. And this would not keep going down below the x-axis because the cost of shorts and shirts are never going to be negative. Okay, is the domain discrete or continuous in this particular situation? Well, because we're talking about individual pairs of shorts or individual shirts, 
and for individual amounts of money, this would be considered discrete. And there we go. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. Okay, now what we're going to do now is we're going to write a linear function for the line that we have on the graph. And basically all this means is we are going to write an equation in slope-intercept form. And this is something that we've already done before, at least when we're looking at a line. So first of all, we've got to find m. Tell us what that equals, and that's the slope. Then we've got to find b, and then we're going to write the equation, right? So m, in order to write m, we've got to find a couple of good intersections. There's one, that's a y-intercept. And then here's another one where it crosses right at an intersection there. All of these others would be um, estimates as far as where it crosses. So now let's look at our, our rise and our run. So to go up, one, two, three. So that's the number we put on top, three. I'm having a little hard time writing here. Sorry, let's, let's try that again. Let's get that three written again. So three on top of our slope. And then from there we go over one, two, three, four, five. So there's our slope, three-fifths. Then we look at our y-intercept. Where did it cross initially? It will cross the y-axis at minus one. So then let's write the entire equation. It's just y equals three-fifths x subtract 1. So we wrote a linear function or a linear equation that matched this graph. And we've done this before. We're just calling it something different today because these equations take on several meanings. All right, so here's one. Write a linear function that relates for x to y. So we notice we've got a, a line that come, comes down through here. We notice that the y-intercept, or b, equals 1. And then to go from one dot to the next, we go down 2 over 1. So our slope would be down 2 over 1. And now, now we're going to write the function in slope-intercept form. y equals negative 2 over 1x plus the y-intercept. So there's the equation for that function. And to be honest with you, you really don't need to put the one on the bottom, but I'm putting it there just because I don't want you to lose track of how we got that. Okay, for our next one, this one's a, a table of values, so we've got we've to come up with our slope, which is the change in y. So our change in y to go from negative 2 to negative 1 is an increase of 1. To go from negative 1 to 0, that's a bump up of 1, bump up of 1. So it looks like for our slope, the change in y is 1. What's the change in x? To go from negative 10 to negative 5, and from negative 5 to 0, and from 0 to 5, they're jumping up by amounts of 5. So our slope is up 1 over 5. And I don't get confused because they've changed, put the y on the bottom and the x on the top. Don't let that confuse you. When you write the slope, the change in y goes on the top. Now, b, what is the y-intercept? Well, at the y-intercept, that's when the x value is 0. So if I find where x is 0 and then look down, what's my y-intercept? In this case, it happens to be 0. Oh, well, that makes it real easy to write this equation. So our equation is just going to be y equals one-fifth x. And that's all I have to write. And if I did write plus zero, that would be okay, just so that you would know that the y-intercept goes through zero comma zero instead of like one or some other point. All right, let's keep it going. Write a linear function that relates y to x. Okay, so in this case, our change in y, to go from 2 
to four, from four to six, from six to eight. Looks like we're bumping up by two, right? Bumping up by two. Okay, how about the x's? Negative six to two, negative two to two, and two to six. If I'm not mistaken, we're jumping up by four each time here. Good thing you know how to count in this way. So our change in y over our change in x is 2 over 4, which simplifies to be 1 half. And that's m. So our m in this case is 1 half. Okay, well, what's B then? What is our y-intercept? Well, we said that the y-intercept is when B, or when x equals 0. Well, we don't have an x equals 0 here, but we do have, we do have, uh, we do have uh, a way to find it. So we notice that that uh, 0 is going to be halfway in between negative 2 and 2 right here. So 0 on this, if we were able to find it on this chart, is halfway in between negative 2 and 2, which means that the y value is going to be halfway in between 4 and 5. So, or 4 and 6, which would make our y-intercept 5, right? So in this case, we actually had to kind of look at the table of values and do a little bit of interpolating, if you will, or estimating, and uh, trying to see where it would be if we were able to get those numbers plugged into the function. So our linear equation, our linear function would then be y equals 1 half x plus 5. So... Again, we had to estimate B by just trying to figure out where zero would be on this set of ordered pairs if we were bumping up along here. Instead of going up four, we only went up two from negative two, which would put us at zero. And then that also put us at five on the Y column. All right. So let's try. We got how many more? We got a couple more to go. So let's keep it, keep it up. So on this one, uh, b equals negative 1, and our slope is up 2 over 2. So up 2 over 2, which simplifies to be just 1. So our equation will be y equals 1x minus 1. That's our linear function. That's a pretty easy one, isn't it? Okay, our next one. So we've got um, B, the y-intercept, is negative 3. And our slope M is up 1 over 2. Up 1 over 2. Okay, now we better take a little closer look at that. Is it really up 1 over 2? This is up 1. But in the y, in the x direction, that is actually over 3. Look at that. They've got this number differently here. So, so our bottom number is not going to be 2. It's going to be up 1 and over 3. So when you're doing these, take a look at your scale here and make sure you're writing them according to the scale that's written there. So y equals 1 third x minus 3. And if you had to, you could, um, if you didn't have any coordinate system with dots on it already, you could graph that quite easily because we know how to graph a linear equation. Okay, so here's a word problem that we need to take a look at. The table shows the cost Y in dollars of X ounces of brewed coffee. So 8 ounces cost 50 cents, 16 ounces cost a dollar, 24 ounces cost a dollar 50. So which variable is independent? Well, we know that the independent variable is x, the number of ounces that you buy. You get to choose that. So graph, graph the data. Okay, is the domain discrete or continuous? 
So if we put that on a graph, we would notice that you could buy incrementally smaller amounts than, than just a half ounce or one ounce, um, unless the company is only going to give you 8 ounces or 16 ounces or 24 ounces. So it, it kind of depends on on how you how you look at it. But if we just base it off of this graph right here or this table of values, we would say the domain is discrete. Okay? And then would write a linear function that relates y to x. So we notice that, that the, when x is 0, what's the y value? 0. So that means our, our y-intercept, if we were to graph this, is 0. And then what's our slope? Uh, for every 8 ounces we go up, we go up by 50 cents, right? So, so m would be 8 over 0.50. 8 ounces for 50 cents. Now, if we wanted to, we could we could make this something over 1. So if we double the 50 cents and we wanted to get this M over 1 with, with something over 1 to make it a little more simple, then if we double 50 cents to get 1, we'd have to double 8 to get 16, right? Oh, and there it is right there. Look at that. So that's our slope. M equals 16 over 1, right? So for every ounce I go up, I go up 16, or every 16 ounces I go up, I go up a dollar in cost. So the coffee is really costing me a, a, a dollar for every 16 ounces. Okay, how much does it cost to purchase 32 ounces of brewed coffee? Well, since... Since I found out that it's costing me 16 each or each 16 ounces is costing me a dollar, then 32 ounces is double what 16 is, so that would equal two dollars. And if we had this on a graph, which I don't have a lot of room to make on here, we would be able to look at it on a graph as well. Okay. And it says to graph the data, but we don't have room to graph it in this case. All right, so our next one, the formula for the area of a triangle A is equal to one-half B times the height. One-half the base times the height. What is the height in feet of the base of the, base of the triangle? So, D, what's the height? What is the length in feet of the base of the triangle? So if one half the base times the height, what is the length of the base? Okay, so let's take a look. If we plug in one of these numbers, the area of nine, let's put that in there. We'll just use these numbers. And that equals one half the base times three. That's, that's B for base. Sorry about that. Okay. So that's what the area is. So actually, let's write that again. We need to get that more accurately written. The area is 9, right? So 9 equals 1 half the base times the height, which in this case is 3. So if I multiply 3 times 1 half, I get 9 equals 3 halves times the base. Or if I divide by 3 over 2 to get base by itself, so then I would uh, flip and multiply, I would get 18 over 3. So the base, in this case, would equal 6 because it would be two-thirds of nine, so. So interesting. So what it would be the length in feet of the base of the triangle? It would be six. 
All right, that's kind of interesting, isn't it? So, good luck with our worksheet. I've got several examples that we've just shown you. You can go back and check out the video on Canvas if you'd like to, uh, or ask questions as we go along. Thank you very much.